Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup. This week, we have an update for you on a story that was one of our biggest stories last week, and it's about an executive over at Estee Lauder who posted a racist meme to his Instagram. I have the verdict on what happened there. Then after that, we're going to be talking about a sad story to my heart. The original YouTube influencer makeup brand is shutting down. And then finally, speaking of influencers, Australia is cracking down on what their influencers are allowed to be paid to promote. It's a very interesting choice. I'm curious to know what you think about it. Hang tight. We're getting into it right now. We're starting with the Estee Lauder story. So last week we talked to you about how John Dempsey, who's an executive over at Estee Lauder, was put on unpaid leave as of February 22nd. If you've worked for an Estee Lauder company, you've probably heard of him, but if you haven't, he is an executive over there. He's in charge of many things, including the Mac AIDS Fund. I'm going to put on the screen for you now the meme that he had put on his personal Instagram. I do have the N word bleeped out. It was the N and then a bunch of asterisks. People were asking last week about the name Chingy in there. Chingy is a rap artist from the early 2000s if you're not familiar with him. Three days after he was put on unpaid leave, John Dempsey posted an apology to his Instagram. In case you weren't here last week, I am going to put it up on the screen for you just so you can read it. But essentially, if you don't feel like reading it, he said, quote, that he carelessly reposted a racist meme without reading it beforehand. He calls it a terrible mistake that undermined everything he'd been working for since his career began. And I said last week that I thought Estee Lauder was just going to wait for all of this to blow over. I mean, the man's been with the company forever. He's in charge of so many things. He reportedly was being paid over $10 million a year. And Estee Lauder proved me wrong. They fired him. The day after What's Up in Makeup went live, they made the decision to let him go effective that week. The company said the posts, quote, do not reflect the values of the Estee Lauder companies, have caused widespread offense, are damaging to our efforts to drive inclusivity both inside and outside our walls, and do not reflect the judgment we expect of our leaders. I feel like this is a great opportunity for Estee Lauder to replace John Dempsey with a more inclusive staff at the higher levels. People that are more representative of the Estee Lauder and Estee Lauder family companies. But I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments. This made me so incredibly sad. So right as I was closing up the script for today, Marlena from Makeup Geek posted on her Instagram, also put up a YouTube video stating that Makeup Geek Cosmetics was shutting down. If you are not familiar with Marlena Stell, she was one of the original beauty gurus from the beginning of YouTube before beauty gurus were even called beauty gurus. I will tell you that personally, Marlena inspired the start of this channel. Marlena is the reason why this channel exists. I was gonna say was, but I still am a huge fan of the Makeup Geek products and have been since they started, what, 14 years ago. In the video, she talks about how in January 2020, they launched their Makeup Geek rebrand and their matrix system of eyeshadow palettes, which were freaking phenomenal, and how they sold out and everything was going really well. And then it was January 2020, so we all know what happened in March, and it just crushed the brand. One thing that was good to hear in Marlena's video was that she said, you know, I started the brand when I was 28, now I'm 42, and I feel like there's other things that I want to do with my life other than owning Makeup Geek. So she did mention that it was bittersweet, and it seems like she's going to move on to ventures that really excite her and bring her joy, which makes me very happy. There are sales going on on their website. They have all of the final products in stock right now. So anything that's on the website, that's what's left. So if there's anything by Makeup Geek or if you wanted to try something from Makeup Geek, this is your time to get it. Personally, I definitely recommend the eyeshadow palettes. Those are my favorite things. They also make really good eyeliner pencils. I don't even really like eyeliner pencils, but I really love Marlena's. I know that this is a time for Marlena to grow 
grow and how it's probably going to end up being a blessing in disguise for her. But I am really sad. <laughs> I'm I I just it's it's such an end of an era. The the brand means so much to me. Marlena means so much to me as a person, and uh, her channel means so much to me that it just breaks my heart that things didn't go better for the brand due to the pandemic. Uh, and I'm really gonna miss the brand. But Marlena will still be around if you're not subscribed to her YouTube channel. She said she is gonna keep uploading. In the past five or six years, I feel like there's been a lot of focus on beauty influencers and their honesty and making sure that they're held accountable for the sponsored content that they make. Well, Australia is cracking down on what their beauty influencers are allowed to do. This is what's happening. Starting July 1st, the Therapeutic Goods Administration will introduce a new advertising code to stop influencers from being paid to promote specific types of products. It's important to note that this is just paid promotion. It's not if them get, just getting things sent in PR and it's not when they purchase something and then talk about it. For the identified products, there is a very interesting quote in Cosmetic Business that I want to read to you. This is what they said. Brand ambassadors are free to endorse goods, but must not refer to their personal experience of using the product. So I guess they're just like, allowed to do like a basic commercial, but not allowed to say that they find the products to be of high quality or that they enjoyed using them or anything like that kind of weird. Here is a list of the products that fall underneath the new regulation. Supplements, vitamins, sunscreens, and some skincare products, protein powders, some medicines, and some therapeutic goods. I hope that they clarify what the some are because that's real wishy-washy. They need to like, not, it can't just be some. Like maybe they were just trying to shorten it for this particular article, but hopefully they provide like a list of what specific things they're not allowed to do. This part really makes sense to me though. It says specifically, if a product is only available through a pharmacist, they must say, ask your pharmacist about this product. This is the kicker too, is if influencers have any of this content currently on their Instagram or their YouTube or whatever, they have to take it down by July 1st. No content is grandfathered in. Like they have to go back through their catalog and delete stuff. Besides them being, at least in this article representation, wishy-washy about which skincare products, which therapeutic goods, like what are we talking about? Besides that, I would personally like to know if I were an Australian influencer, what are the consequences for this? Because we saw back a couple years ago, I think it was 2019, we saw that the FTC was cracking down on American influencers. And there was this whole, you know, influencer 101 pamphlet that was available online, but there were like no consequences for anybody. And there still isn't. I think maybe like I heard about maybe one or two influencers getting in any kind of trouble for anything. I mean, maybe it's just because I don't know people that break the rules. But I don't know. It just seems like there's no consequences for any of that that the FTC tried to put in place. So I'm wondering if the Australian government is putting things in place for their influencers to actually hold people accountable. And my nosy self is just curious, which videos caused all of this to happen? Like what were the incidents that led to them wanting to take this kind of action? I do think that this law is a little weird, at least from an outsider's perspective. I haven't read it from end to end because I don't have access to that. But what's most concerning for me is that influencers aren't allowed to talk about their experiences with sunscreens that they've tried if they're being paid to promote it. I feel like the influencer's opinion is really important in that case. So like for example, if they have a darker skin tone, knowing that it doesn't have a white cast and even things like, you know, does it feel greasy on the skin? Does it seep in nicely? Does it wear well under makeup? I feel like that's information that sells sunscreen to a consumer who may not be wearing any sunscreen at all. And we all know that using sunscreen significantly reduces our risk of developing skin cancers. So in that particular case, I find it very odd that they wouldn't want influencers to be paid to share their experiences with the sunscreen. Like I get it, it's probably considered a drug because it does have drug facts on there. But at the same time, like we're talking about the health of the Australian consumers. So I don't know, I kind of have mixed feelings about it, but I would love to know your thoughts. 
last time on What's Up in Makeup. No, <laughs> not last time. It wasn't last week. It was another week. But we were talking about how Pat McGrath was suing a bunch of different brands, including Rose Inc., for their use of specific words. So in the case of Rose Inc., she was suing them or is currently suing them for the use of the word divine in the names of their products. And the comment section lit up with people not happy about this, feeling like Pat McGrath Labs does not own these specific names, all of that. And I found it very funny that the next story about Pat McGrath is that Pat McGrath is getting her own Barbie doll. The doll is in celebration of National Women's Day of 2022, and the line is called Female Founders. It also includes director Shonda Rhimes and also fashion designer Lon Yu. Pat McGrath stated about her doll, quote, it is an honor having a Barbie in my likeness, and I would be so happy if it in any way inspires anyone to follow their dreams and believe that with hard work, creativity, and perseverance, everything is possible. Through the female founders dolls, Barbie hopes to close the quote, dream gap. It's a time when girls are likely to develop self-limiting beliefs, which they say starts around the age of eight, and that girls are more likely to experience challenges in becoming leaders, such as fear of risk and gender stereotypes. But this is what was weird about it. It doesn't seem like the dolls are available for sale. Uh, they mentioned in the article that it is a one-of-a-kind doll. So it's like, how are you going to inspire children if the dolls aren't in the toy stores? <laughs> I highly doubt that eight-year-olds are reading beauty packaging. Like, you know what I mean? So unless their parents are somehow coming across this line on their social feeds or whatever, or in their news articles, the kids aren't even gonna know about it. So how, I, I don't get the point. That's just me personally, unless they sell them in toy stores, which it didn't seem like they were. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe they're going to be launched and they just haven't been launched yet. I don't know. But I mean, I think it's cool. I think it's a cool idea, but I don't see how it's gonna meet their goal. Back in January, we talked about how Desium was raising prices on their brands called The Ordinary and Nyad. They said that there were many factors at play, including the increases in the price of raw ingredients, packaging and shipping, their push to be as environmentally friendly as possible, and the cost of living increases for employees. Well, it looks like Elf is now doing the same thing. They posted on Instagram, quote, as we face a world of rising costs, prices on many of our products will increase. Most products impacted will increase in price by $1, while prices on some of your favorites will remain the same. We remain committed to transparency and making the best of beauty accessible at mic drop prices, always clean, vegan, and cruelty-free. They did have an image on their Instagram that stated that these three specific products would not be affected. That's the lip lacquers, the bite-sized eyeshadow palettes, and the instant lift brow pencil. No word that I could find on which specific products are going to have a price increase, but we do know that this is happening on March 7th. I am curious, I wonder if Elf saw the response to what Desium had done making the post and being really transparent and they were like, yeah, we can do that too. And maybe they set that all of that in motion, like being really public about it. I wonder if that's, that's how it went down. Conspiracy theories. And finally, we have our celebrity brand launch of the week. And this week we have model Winnie Harlow's new sunscreen line. It is called K-Skin, and it is a line of sun protection products suitable for all skin tones. The story behind it is actually pretty interesting. So when Winnie was a kid, she was living in Canada. That's where she grew up, but her dad lived in Jamaica, and she would go visit him, and he would put sunscreen all over her, and it would leave a white cast, and she freaking hated it because she didn't like the way that it looked. So fast forward to her being a model, being on the beach, 2018. She's on the beach, she's posing, and the photographers are also concerned about the white cast that the sunscreen is going to leave. So they forego the sunscreen, they do the photo shoot, and Winnie got burned so badly that she needed medical attention. She also said that it permanently altered her vitiligo pattern. So that's what was the inspiration behind the brand. She is currently launching, or actually has already launched, two types of face lotion, a lip balm, and a body oil. They all have SPF 30 or higher. The prices range from four $14 to $34. They are available now on her website and at Sephora.com. They will launch in Sephora stores on April 1st. 
All right, let's move into the product report. There were a lot of things that were launched this week that I was just kind of like, meh. So I'm just gonna tell you the things that I found the most interesting. So the first thing I wanted to mention is from Sigma, the Color Corrector and Beaming Glow Powder. The Color Corrector is their first ever cream complexion product. The color correcting duos are designed to neutralize unwanted pigmentation of the skin while simultaneously minimizing the appearance of textured imperfections. It comes in three shades, light, medium, and deep. They're 30 bucks each. And then the Beaming Glow Powder. It is a multi-use powder that is basically a highlighter light. It is something you can use all over your face or you can just use it on the high points of your cheeks just to give your skin a glow. Cost of that product is $32. Moving on to one that I thought was very fun. This is Manny Me and Coca-Cola. They are stick-on gel manicures. Manny Me has signed a three-year contract with Coca-Cola and and what I thought was really cool in the article that I read is it's not just Coca-Cola that they're partnering with, it's the entire Coca-Cola portfolio. So we may end up seeing things like a Sprite or a Fanta or Minute Maid Nails, and I just think that's really cool. <laughs> We'll have to keep our eye on that. Huda Beauty launched her Cherry Blossom collection. There's a Cherry Blossom shade of her Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. They say it's suitable for fair to medium skin tones, neutralizes and brightens golden undertones and under eye darkness, $34. And then the Cherry Blossom Lip Set, it's a liquid lipstick and a lip gloss, that's $37. Y'all know I'm not the biggest Morphe fan, but this caught my eye and I had to mention it. It's the Morphe and Lucky Charms collection. <laughs> It's launching March 8th, and this is what they say, quote, it's time to make some magic with Morphe. <laughs> Prices range from $10 to $29. There's an artistry palette, a lip gloss, lip color pencil set, and a brush set. I am a big Lucky Charms fan. I have been since I was a small child. Tons of nostalgia here. I'm not buying it, but it is really cute to look at. Over at Sephora, we talked about last week that Give by Gwen Stefani was coming. It has now launched. It is available at Sephora. There's three formulas of lipstick in just her signature red shade. There's eyeliner in two shades, a black and a cobalt blue. Two brow pencils with different tips. There's seven shades of each kind of brow pencil, a face oil primer, and four different eyeshadow quads. I remember reading in the comment section that people were concerned about that they had only showed one eyeshadow quad and that it looked like it would only be good for people that look like Gwen, but the other eyeshadow quads do look like they might be able to work for more skin tones. You'll have to let me know what you think. Of course, over at Sephora, every product has between 35 and 40-ish reviews. They are all five stars. <laughs> <laughs> Except the eyeshadow palette. The eyeshadow palette, I guess they didn't send those out for the incentivized reviews. Danessa Myrick's Beauty's new complexion products are launching on March 8th on Sephora's website. They are over there for you to peruse now if you would like. First, we have the Yummy Skin Serum Foundation, $34. They say it is a skincare hybrid foundation with medium buildable coverage that effortlessly creates a natural looking skin-like glow. If you're curious, it looks like the main ingredients are skin balancing and oil absorbing. So if that's you, that may be something you want to look at. And then we have the Yummy Skin Glow Serum Primer, $34 as well. Does come in two shades. They say it is a skincare infused radiant priming serum that hydrates, preps, and protects skin for a lit from within glow. Hero ingredients in there seem to be glycerin to help pull water into the skin. Olive squalane is going to help you with skin balancing. And niacinamide, which of course has tons of skincare benefits for those that aren't sensitive to it. Uh, it does look like it's more skincare than it is a face primer. Kind of, you know, when you want to prep your skin for makeup, you want it to be as healthy as possible. I think that's where they're going, but I wouldn't expect this to make your makeup last longer, just as a heads up. Moving over to Ulta, I cannot with freaking Makeup Revolution. I cannot with this brand. They make me laugh so hard, I swear. This is the I Heart Revolution cheese board collection. I am not joking. I thought this would have been something for April Fools, but it is freaking real. Price Prices range from $7 to $15. We have the big cheese eyeshadow palette. We have the mini cheese eyeshadow palette. Swiss cheese highlighter duo. This one that is so cute. The cheese board lip balm. Oh my gosh. And then we have the cheese and mouse sponge duo. If you get this, you have to tell me if it's any good or not. I would doubt that it's of any kind of quality because a lot of make iHeart Revolution specifically products are just very cheaply, just they're not good. Uh, but 
This stuff's really cute. <laughs> Especially the lip balm. I kind of want to get the lip balm. I mean, how bad could it be? And then the only other thing over at Ulta that I thought looked really interesting was the MAC and Wild Cherry collection. Am I remembering that they had a cherry blossom collection last year, but it was only available in Asia? Am I remembering that right? I don't know. But anyway, this one's available now at Max website. The Extra Dimension Skin Finish in Petallic Metallic, $39.50. The Love Me Lipstick in three shades, $23 each. Glow Play Blush in three, day, three shades, $33 each. The Fix Plush Cherry Blossom, it does smell like cherry blossoms. That's 32 bucks. The Prep and Prime Lip, $21. And the Brush Stroke Liner, $24. All right, PR purchase product of the week. This was a good week for PR and for purchase. So I got to try lots of things this week. First thing I got, oh, where did it go? How could I lose it? It's freaking gigantic. There it is. <gasps> la, 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 la. I bought this. This was not PR. I bought the Glam Light Hershey Kisses collection. I'm not sure if this is gonna be next week's Friday video, but it might be. What I used today on my eyes, I set up my look with this one. It's so cute, oh my gosh, I'm dying. So I used this shade and this shade to set up uh, on my lid, and then I did use this shade here in my inner corner. And then the purple on my lid is this one right here. And I will show you, dun da 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 and I used this shade down here, and then also on my lower lash line, I used this one. And um, I'm not, I need to use them more. I, mm, I need to use them more. I also got these in PR. These are the new Koki blushes. This one is in the shade Flushed. Really beautiful print. I don't know if you can see that on there. I'm gonna try to zoom in so you can see, but it's gorgeous, the print that's in there. It went on very, very pigmented, so just be really careful. Use a light hand with your brush if you don't want really pigmented going on where you have to really blend it out. Uh, so that was that. And then I also got in PR a big package from City Color Cosmetics, but so much of it, like almost all of it, is very, very bright, which isn't really my jam. So I picked out a couple of things. Uh, this is the City Color Be Bold Color Liner, and this is just the black version, and it solidified how much I don't like eyeliners like this. I think for an eyeliner like this, it was good if you like liners. I mean, it, it's just, I prefer something that's easier to control like a pen, like a brush tip pen is so much easier than something like this. Uh, but I mean, it went on fine. If you're good at these, you'll probably like it. I'm just not that good at them. I also use their canvas base. This is in the shade Wisteria. It's just a white. It was really patchy to go on, difficult to build. Uh, and I didn't really like using this today, but I am gonna keep trying it to see if I can figure out some techniques that work better. I use my fingertip today, so maybe a brush would be better. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. And then finally, on my lips, paired with this Laura Lee Los Angeles lipstick uh, that was sent to me a while ago in PR. This is in the shade Show Off. This is new to me that was sent in PR from Essence. This is the Extreme Shine Volumizing, Volume Lip Gloss, not Volumizing, but Volume Lip Gloss. And this is in the shade Dusty Rose. Uh, it didn't really feel plumping in any way. So if you're looking for that, uh, you're gonna get natural, like your lips looking a little bit bigger just because of it being a gloss, but I didn't feel anything plumping or notice anything plumping with it. It's just a gloss but it feels very nice and it smells great. It smells like vanilla cherries. Mm -mm, nope. Vanilla Skittles. Wouldn't that be a great flavor of Skittles vanilla? No, that would not be a good flavor. It smells good, darn it. It just smells good. So yeah, I'm gonna keep using this too with and without lipstick. All right, notable sales of the week. We have the Sephora Spring Savings Event has been announced. The dates are Rouge, April 1st to 11th. You're gonna get 20% off. VIB, April 5th, April 11th, that's 15% off. And Insiders, April 7th to April 11th, that's 10% off. And then they will continue to have that 30% off on Sephora collection products, both in store and online. That is directly after the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, which is going to start on March 13th. We did talk about it last week, but since it's coming up, I figured I would mention it again. But going on right now, we do have the Ole Hendrickson 40% off select glow goodies ends March 6th. Derm Store Beauty Refresh event up to 20% off ends March 10th. And Target 20% off select skincare does start today. And finally, our artist shout out of the week. This is Kara Marquez from Columbia. Holy moly, wait, you just got, prepare yourself. 
Prepare yourself, my friend. It's coming. Here we go. Let's zoom it in. This is her troll's look. I mean, because of the subject is relatively quote unquote simple, but it is exactly what it should be for what she's trying to achieve. I mean, the contouring is absolute perfection. That is a strength that Caro has. Contouring, just unbelievable. I also love the glitter brows. She didn't have to do that, but she did, and I kind of love it. Let's move over to her second look, which is called Moss Fairy. Again, just the pure artistry of this look is incredible. Based on reading the translation of the caption, it seems like she made all of the mushrooms out of model magic, which, they're really cool. And really, it's the placement of the little mushrooms and all of the moss and everything that gets me. How it's angled to complement the shape of her face and her body is just absolutely beautiful. And of course, the makeup's beautiful. I mean, the freckles are adorable. The lashes she chose really give a fairy feeling. Just really fun to look at. Just, I love it. I love it so much. This is called Reindeer Grapes. I mean, it is, it's a really weird concept. <laughs> freaking love it. That's so cool. Like what? Like why would you, why would you even make this? But I love it so much. Okay, I'm screeching. I need to stop. Again, she is just the master of contouring from the forehead all the way down to her chest. I mean, the white highlight in the eye and on the chin, just a beautiful contrast there. She has so many gorgeous looks over on her Instagram. This is another one of those. You got to guess how many followers she has. And it's always low when I say that. 3,070. Like, are you kidding me? Like, how? It's just, it's not fair. It's not right that someone with this much talent does not have more attention, that there aren't more people able to go over there and just find her and enjoy what she's doing. Uh, so if you do enjoy what she's doing, the link to her Instagram is going to be down in the video description down below. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, thank you, as always, to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so, so much for all of your submissions this week. I really appreciate you. I just want to tell you a side note about them. So I always do a chatter post of the week because it's a not chatter group so we can keep all the things in order. And I want people to be able to talk and get to know each other and stuff. So we were talking about irrational fears this week, and I have not laugh that hard of the things that we're all afraid of. Like, I'm terrified of zombies, which is stupid, right? The things that, that people are afraid of, like, it's like, it makes you feel normal when you're afraid of something irrational. <laughs> So I just want to thank them really quickly for sharing those irrational fears in the group because it was a really fun read to see their responses. Our chat today is going to be at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Hopefully you can join us. If you cannot join us, it is no problem at all. It's very easy to find, especially if you're subscribed. You just head over to your subscription feed and it's right there for you. But if you're not subscribed, you can also find it by going over to my channel page and clicking on where it says my videos and then click on the video titled live chat. Thank you so much for watching What's Been Makeup this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you would like to hang out a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode. If you missed it, it should be right there. But if you do need to go, it is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.